Hey, guys. Does anyone recognize that song? We have Jacob Gillian, our composer, composing a rendition on Hohen Friedberger March. Uh, and if you're familiar with the history, Hohen Friedberger is a battle during the Seven Years' War led by Frederick the Great. Um, and uh, the march was composed after the war. It was composed after the war. It was still in the 18th century that it was composed, I think in the 1790s or 1780s, something like that. Uh, but still fits the theme of the game, so I figured it was worth including. So we got a nice mix of historical and um, atmospheric marches, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, thank you, she, chill, chill Polo. I don't know why I had trouble reading that. Chill Polo, wish listing the game, thank you. Um, uh, Gumpring, is it free? I'm too poor. Well, it's not free, but you can wish list it for free. So if you go over to our Steam page, I'll send you guys a link. It helps a ton if you could do this. If you can go and for free, completely just add to your wish list, it'll notify you when the game's out. It'll know you, notify you when there's sales on the games too. So if you can't afford an expensive game, it's going to tell you the deepest sales that you can pick it up on and so on. So wish listing, it's completely free to do, doesn't hurt, um, and I highly recommend doing that. Um, but I'm here to answer all your questions about the game. Also, we I'm just going to share some links too. We have a Discord which I will link you guys, and I definitely recommend joining the Discord. I'm there all the time answering questions, so you hop in there, and we can chat personally. So if you want a one-on-one -on -one conversation and to ask me questions about the game, um, I am I can rant all day about the game, so uh, definitely feel free to um, join that. And the last thing I'll link you to is to our first dev diary. So if you don't know already, we have a studio, a game studio channel, um, and that's where we had posted about Fire Maneuver, so you can go there and learn more about the game. Now today, I may actually review. Do you guys think this would be cool? I could review the dev diary we made and talk about all the mechanics, what you can expect, and simultaneously I'll pause maybe every minute and answer your um, questions. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. So you can kind of get to see the dev diary if you haven't yet, and I can answer questions about it simultaneously. Um, before we jump into that, let me just read some of your questions um, before we jump into to, uh, watching the video there. Um, Handsome says, I hope it doesn't flop like Fire Maneuver did. Well, listen, let me preface everything um, uh, just quickly on Fire Maneuver so it doesn't seem like I'm, you know, I'll, I'll at least address what happened with that game and so you can have a more informed decision about our future games. So um, I've talked about it before a million times on stream. I'm not going to dedicate this stream to talking about it, but we worked on Fire Maneuver, spent a couple years on it. Um, it was our first game, made a lot of mistakes there. Um, it, I think it's still a fun game to, especially single player. The multiplayer is a little harder um, to get working, but the I think the single player is good. Um, but yeah, we worked very hard on that game. I think the biggest thing that hurt us was we released it as a free-to-play title. And as many of you guys know, if you download a free-to-play game, oftentimes they're going to advertise as free. But once you get in, they want to get all your money from all these different microtransactions, pay to win, that sort of thing. We didn't have on the, our launch a single microtransaction as a free-to-play game. So there was no monetization strategy. And of course, if you guys know of other games like Cyberpunk or um, Battlefield 2042, um, those games came out, they were really buggy, but they made money, and so you could take that money and reinvest it to fix the game. Well, in our case, we released it for free, when, uh-oh, we didn't make a monetization uh, strategy and, and, and flopped. Um, so, yeah, if you're curious what happened with that game, I mean, that was just, it was difficult to, um, to continue the development of that. So I thought, let's start fresh, let's come up with a brand new game idea, let's learn everything from our mistakes, and make something that... Um, is going to be polished, is going to be completely fluid, is going to have a really solid gameplay loop. Um, I think one of the issues in Fire Maneuver is we the optimization obviously was an issue, but we didn't have a reason for you to keep coming back to the game. So something that we're really focusing on with Master of Command um, is having a really solid gameplay loop. So there's going to be a reason for you to keep coming back. And so when we look at that devlog today, um, you're really going to see all of the effort that we've put in to overhauling our game design to just be smarter about the whole process of, of this uh, game development. So it's unfortunate that we had to um, kind of halt Fire Maneuver's development, but I think you guys are really going to like what we what we have next. And I think from what the team has learned and, and what we're achieving, I think, you know, I'm, I'm just very impressed. Obviously, I'm biased, but I'm impressed with what we've been able to do so far, and I I'm excited to show you guys. So, um, okay, I'll take some more questions. And hopefully that'll be, you know, we don't have to talk about Fire Maneuver any longer. I did just want to address it for anybody still curious, um, but I'll answer some other questions now. So some people are saying... Um, will there be PvP or multiplayer? This kind of goes with what I was saying with Fire Maneuver. We, we took on so much. We try to make the game do a little bit of everything, and we kind of, 
uh, had a, a rough launch. With this game, we want to be real smart and real focused, so we're not doing multiplayer. We're just going to focus on a really good single-player experience. I don't think it needs PvP. Um, I, I just want to have a really solid game that you can go to if you're feeling bored, turn off your brain, have a little bit of challenge, right, but get into the flow of things, lead some battles, um, and... Uh, that's kind of what I'm looking for here. I don't want to have all these PvP modes and extra stuff. Every little thing you add on, like multiplayer, you add on a, a couple months of the game. It, maybe even six months of the game, right? You add in customization. Okay, you add in two to three months of the game. You add in um, modding support. You add an extra two to three months of the game. All these little things start to add up, and then you realize, oh, crap, we just added two extra years to the whole game development just to get in all these fun little features. For a small indie team, it's difficult to bring those in. And the every little feature you add in, it's feature creep, right? So every little feature you put in, not only is it bloating the game but and, and delaying it, but it could also risk making a, a unpolished game. So I think our strategy here is to really go with something refined, polished, and um, something that we can tackle. Um, okay, what device is, is it on? It's on PC. I think we're just doing Windows, though. It's a little hard to port it to the other um, operating system. So for now, we just have Windows planned. Um, what else have people got to say? Random Roblox players asking if it's easy to play. I think this is going to be one of those games that's like simple to learn but hard to master. Um, no pun intended. <laughs> um, but I think uh, it's if you play Total War games and you know how to line up troops and shoot, I think you'll figure that part out. But the amount of detailing and um, uh, personalization you can do to like all your troops, the muskets you assign them, and the formations that they're in, the firing methods they're using, and that sort of thing, those are all quite detailed. Um, and I think that is going to be more difficult to master. Um, let me keep reading. New game acronym MOC. Yeah, I've, I've been calling it MOC, honestly. I think that's a, a good name to call it. Let me see if I have any water because my mouth is dry. I'll be right back. One sec. In the meantime, while I'm filling up some water, I'm going to play the Hohen Friedberg March for you. Let me know if you guys recognize it. This is for the game. I'm already back. Super quick. Um, so Ben is asking if we have a basic timeline, even though um, even though it says to, to be announced. I think, Ben, like I said, we're going small and focused. I think if we actually do achieve everything and we're not bloating the game and trying to make something large that we can't actually uh, accomplish, I would say we could even finish this by the end of this year. Um, that's a little optimistic. I'm not in any rush necessarily. Um, obviously we got bills to pay. The longer you run a studio, the more it costs, right? So you, you can't, it's not like when people say, Hey, take your time, take 10 years to make the game of your dreams. It's like, Hey, if I had a millionaire funding, uh, 10 years of development, I'll, I'll make something cool. But, um, yeah, you have, you have to be realistic. You don't want to take too short and, and release a, a broken game. You don't want to take too long and, um, uh, you have to bring in a publisher and that sort of thing. So I'm thinking maybe the very end of this year, um, worst case scenario, like beginning of next year, I think is a more realistic, I think like quarter one, 2025 sounds like a realistic thing. And I don't want to do early access. So, yeah. Um, can you also have mixed units under your officers, like skirmishers and, and hustlers? Um, De Reuter asks. Yeah. So if you guys aren't familiar, we do a, we have a divisional system in this game and how that works is unlike a total war game or even like ultimate general or those sorts of games, um, you have your troops split by division. So you can see this officer is leading these four regiments. This officer is leading these four regiments and so on. You can mix which uh, units are under that division. So this division here has two QSC or heavy cavalry, ca uh, heavy cavalry regiments and then two um, Jaeger regiments by the looks of it. Or actually these look like horse grenadiers um, or horse Jaegers or something like that. Yeah, I think they might, might actually be cavalry as well. Um, the 4th Division certainly, though, has a Hussar and then three Fry Corps regiments. Uh, so you can mix and match, and there are benefits to doing it. So your officers have skill trees, and an officer, you might give an officer, like, plus 10% melee skill, and now suddenly you want to give that division, um, sorry, you want to give that officer, who has the plus 10 melee skill, um, maybe two cavalry regiments, because they're melee-focused, and maybe two um, grenadier, like line infantry regiments, because they're melee-focused too. So you could find the overlap between different unit types and try to maximize their skills by assigning and upgrading that officer in a particular direction, and then create those kind of um, unique army compositions. Um, let's see if I have any other questions here. Tony says, Griffin, I followed the entire development cycle fire maneuver, and I feel like there was not enough planning on launch in subsequent updates. Do you get, did you guys change that in that regard? Did you guys change anything in that regard? Ah, okay. Um, 
Yeah, for I felt like we did a good job with the updates, honestly, at first. We were doing, like, weekly updates. Um, and then we did big, major updates every, like, month or two. So I felt like we did a good job with that. Now, I will say, like, as of now, as of last year, 2023, there were, like, no updates because we were done with the game. We came out of early access. So in that way, for Master of... Unlike Fire Maneuver with Master of Command, I would intend on continuously updating it until it's perfect, like, the way we are done with it. Um, that That is something I really want to achieve. And I think it is far more achievable if this game is priced at, like, 20 or $30 or something. More likely 20 or 25 right? Um, if we have the money to do it, then yeah, of course, then we can spend as much time as we need to, uh, fixing anything or adding anything and that sort of thing. If it's a free to play game, you release it, you make no money from all that time and effort you put in. And you're like, uh Oh, how am I supposed to even pay to, uh, like fix all or like add a new faction with new art and that sort of, it's too difficult to do. So I think free to play was our biggest mistake personally. Um, and then you said, um, there was enough planning on launch. Yeah, that was also a big thing, too. We rushed into the launch of that. So that's something I, I think we definitely learned from. Um, Tomahawk says, American Revolution, if this goes well. Well, American Revolution, there's already a new Ultimate General game coming out this year on uh, the American Revolution. So if you want to play an American Revolution game, uh, you will have one. Um, but it's by a different game. Um, if this goes well, could you consider doing sequel games, asks Tyler. So Tyler is asking if we could do a series like Total War. I think if that's kind of the reason I did Master of Command Prussian Glory, because how cool would it be if you did Master of Command Napoleon or Master of Command Hannibal or that that, that sort of thing? Um, so perhaps, perhaps it could have a sequel. Um, or maybe this is a one and done. I don't know yet. So I, I don't want to plan too far ahead, especially because if you start planning too far ahead, guess what happens? You think, um, well, I would like to add all these factions, but um, I want to add that one as a DLC and that one as... Okay, why don't we strip away the game content and then plan to add it later and charge for it or, or that sort of... You know, like people start to plan so far ahead, they start pulling features from the game. So I don't want to think too far ahead. I just want to think, um, let's make a good game. Let's make a polished game. Learn from any of our mistakes. Make something people genuinely want to play and replay. That's a big thing. Um, and then just see what happens. Feel it out. Maybe we want to work on it longer. Maybe we, we want to move on to the next game. Maybe it's another Master of Command or it's something totally unique. Um, so that I, I'm, I want to keep some flexibility for. Um, Tony's asking if it's the same composer as FNM. It is the same composer, actually. It's Jacob. And something really cool about the music that I'll show you guys is um, we are doing more like atmospheric music. So tell me what game this reminds you of. Um, you guys tell me if you recognize this at all. I think he did such an awesome job here. Uh, not this one yet. Uh, I mean, it says it here, akin to Empire, Empire Total. I, I think we pulled some Empire Total War influence, and I think it's, it reminds me just like that. I love it. So this is like the battle's just starting, and there's no shots fired yet. This is like the low intensity, like marching to the battle. That's cool. And I love that we do different music when the battle starts versus when you're marching to the front line. I think that's so cool. Um, I've got a couple more as well. This is the defeat theme. So they're pretty cool. I think we, we've got that mix between history. We also have Frederikus Rex, you guys probably heard in the trailer. Who who here is familiar with the Frederikus Rex march? Has anybody heard this march before, before me playing it? So I think this makes for a great victory march, don't you? I think this is a great one. Um, and then we've got more of these, like, low-intensity battle tracks, and I just think they sound so good. It's got, like, a John Williams sound. It's, like... I mean, I'm so excited. The art looks good, the unit models, and let me also say this, guys. This, and, uh, this image here is not just, like, it's not just a pre-render where you just pose the troops. And while we did pose the troops for this, um... It's not as if all of this was created for the trailer, right? Every model you see here, all the textures, the smoke, um, the flags, the firing animations, um, the map, the trees, the buildings, this is all for the game. This is not like a fake, like, hey, buy some artwork, throw it in, take it from the asset store and throw it together. Like all of these assets you're seeing here were built for the game. Um, something else that's awesome that I think you guys are going to love. These troops here, their uniforms 
are fully modular. Now that doesn't mean the player gets to control them. It doesn't mean you get to like uh, take off the buttons, right? And like change them out. It does mean though that um, we don't need a custom unique texture for every guy because all of the elements of the uniforms are modular. And so if we need to export a new unit, we can just like change the color, change the, um, like remix the uniform super easily, meaning exporting units is easier than ever. And we can have rosters as in um, how many different unit types you have per country of like 30 different completely unique units for each country. 30 is a lot because you're going to, we have at least three, three big nations in the game, at least three, Prussia, Austria, Russia. We may add more. I don't know yet. Um, but that, that ensures at least like a hundred unique units in the game, which I think is just awesome. You're not going to see those like reskin line infantry that are all the same. Um, so we're really taking that kind of effort, um, to make them unique. Uh, and I'm very excited about that. Also, these guys are three, <clears throat> they're 3d models in our classic, like armchair 2d background. And so they're so smooth when they move around, when they fire and reload, it's smoother than ever. It's smoother than you've ever seen on fire maneuver. Um, so I'm really excited about that as well. Um, will there be naval combat? We're not doing naval combat. I think that would... Naval combat's like making a whole new game, right? So that would be like making two separate games at once. We're just focusing on like one specific area and we want to be really focused um, and not bite off more than we can chew. Um, just for those who just... Joined... <clears throat> God, I keep... My throat is so dry. <laughs> Let me drink some water. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I had just woken up recently, so I got up late a little. But anyways, all right. For those of you who just joined the stream... Um, uh, check out the Steam page. It's, it is it is completely free to add to your wish list. Okay, completely free to add to your wish list. This will notify you um, about the game when it's out. So I really recommend that. I also recommend we have a Discord server here, and I'm going to invite you. And you can ask me any questions you guys want. After the stream, I'll be there at, uh, answering questions too. So I definitely recommend doing that. Um, what other questions have we got? Then I want to go over the dev diary if you guys are interested. Logistics in this game um, has become more vital in campaign. Yeah, I, I'll show you actually in the dev diary, we talk about logistics and I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, will this include the French and Indian War? No French and Indian War, no British or French yet. Um, though, here's the thing, stick around. We'll do maybe like, let's stream for maybe 15 more minutes. Okay, so we won't be here forever. I'll show you this seven minute dev diary and then I'm gonna do a survey at the end over what you guys are most excited for. In fact, I may wanna do that survey now just while you're all here, because I have a lot of your guys' attention, and I don't want to play this video and some of you guys tune out because you've already seen it. So I may survey you. So the first question I want to ask you is, um, um, I'll do, two, you know what, I'll do two surveys. Let's do two small ones, okay? So this is part one of the survey. Um, what are you most, um, what is most important to you in a game like this? So this kind of like battles, little campaign map, and that sort of thing. Um, Um, uh, what else could I add? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So I gave you some options. There's a poll in the Steam chat or in the YouTube chat. So if you're here, um, you can go and check out the chat and see the poll that was just released. And I'm gonna save your guys' answers. And we're gonna do a couple polls. I may I may do. Um, one poll here and maybe do one more poll and then we'll watch the video and then I'll do a couple more polls I think that would be cool. So you guys can vote. It's completely free to vote. Obviously <laughs> uh, If you go in the YouTube chat, you can vote there All right, we got 62 votes. I think I'll wrap up the vote when it gets to like a hundred Seems like you guys mostly care about battle AI in the campaign. Yeah, All right, I'll wrap up the vote here. Cool. Oh, people are still coming in to vote. All right, I'll give you guys some time. It just went up to 80 votes. All right, there we go. I'll screenshot it there. Perfect. And we can end that poll now. And I'll give you guys a couple more options too. Um, let me add in another poll. What? Let's do this. We'll say what content um, is most important to you. Um, big unit rosters. So this would mean like you have a lot of different units with each faction. <clears throat> I'm 
but or let's say like unit variety let's do that that's a better way of saying it um faction variety um or we'll just say lots of factions or or lots of unit variety right so this is like a few factions with a ton of unit variety or a lot of factions with less unit variety kind of it doesn't have to be that way but just like what do you what are you more passionate about um in that regard um and then what other content um honestly i think that would be it like i'm just curious about that part as well and then i also want to do another poll about your guys favorite country at this time period and then we will go over the dev diary um in the meantime i'll a i'll answer a couple other questions yeah both to be honest yep um can you choose difficulty from the beginning yeah i think so do we we've got um uh, easy, medium, and hard difficulty. Yeah, that may change actually by the end. We may just go like normal and hard, but I've got to feel that out. It's a little too early to say just yet. Um, what's your favorite thing you did while making the game? Um, I enjoyed, you know, it's fun. We're writing like all these traits and all the content, all the like items you can pick up. That's fun. And I like the personality traits of like your officers. I think that's also really fun. Um, so you can have like something I want to show you guys. Um, can I show, I don't think I can show you just yet. But you have, we have a personality trait system. So when you hire an officer, he could be like a disgruntled noble. He's like an adjective and a noun. So he could be a, um, a loyal mathematician or like he kind of has his own background and personality. And that, um, that's something that you've got to work around. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, okay. Unit you know, variety is something you care about. And then the last thing I'm going to ask you is what your favorite um, favorite nation in the, in the 1700s? So France, Prussia. Britain, um, Russia. In fact, uh, Austria should be one of these options too. I wonder if I can do, why don't we do, hmm, how could I split this poll between those two? I wish I could add one more. Why don't we do, should I combine any of these? Where can we fit in Austria? <laughs> should I make Prussia and Austria like this because they're both Germanic? Because I don't have room for a fifth. What do you guys think? I'm just curious what you're... Because all of these nations fought in this area. But we only intend currently on doing Prussia, Austria, and Russia. So, yeah. We'll definitely do this poll again on Discord. But I think this is fine. And we'll see what your guys' favorite nations are. It, the poll's a little rough to do because we had to combine two countries. But we'll see what your favorites are. And then, and then uh, just out of curiosity. Well, units also have some abilities, or are they just different stats? They do have different abilities, actually. So look at all these blue buttons right here. Check out the Steam page. Look at all the blue buttons down here above the divisions. So these are all, like, abilities that your officer is giving these troops. And those troops themselves, look over here, they can throw grenades. You can take off your bayonet or take it back on. You can switch between a whole different uh, amount of formations. You can go into open order mode, like, spread out or um, stay together. You could actually tell a unit, and I don't know if we're going to keep this or not. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to pitch this to you. We're thinking, in fact, I think we've already coded some of this, <clears throat> of letting troops decide whether they want to volley fire or free fire. So if you've ever played Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars, and you, you're controlling your regiment, and you control like when they shoot their volleys, or if they go free fire, or that sort of thing, we're thinking of letting players do that. And so volley fires would do bigger like morale shocks, but free fire would get off more damage because you're just constantly rolling shots off. You're not waiting for people to, to reload. Um, so you'd be able to decide, like, hey, do we want to have these big, powerful volleys and, and route the enemy off the field? Or get as many rounds as we can off. We know we're not going to route them. They're too big for us. Just get as many shots off as we can. So you'd, you'd be able to switch between two firing modes. And I thought that could be kind of cool. Um, all right. All right, that's it for the polls for now. And then we are going to watch the dev uh, dev log. And I'm going to stop for you guys to a uh, ask questions um, every minute or so. And just to answer this one question, I, ha I have been seeing this. Will you be able to play as other countries um, other than Prussia? Right now, the only playables we have added are Russia, Austria, Prussia. That's it for now. Although we could add a little bit more if we've got the time. I'm just wondering... Like, just to, just to say casually to you guys, how important is it? Because we could look at delaying the game a little bit if you guys really wanted, like, Britain and France in. I'm just wondering, you know, are, do you guys think we're going a little too niche by focusing on just those three nations in that one small area? Which is going to be a 
a more polished and focused experience? Or do you want us to open us up to like that Hanoverian campaign out west a little, which is still Central Europe. It's all, still all regionally connected to try to fit in Britain and France because I'm not sure if we'll have the time for it. But if it if it meant a lot to you guys to have that the, the five big factions, I could try to um, uh, bring them in. But I would be worried about hurting the scope of the game or, or hurting the po level of polish that we're going for. Um, I feel like those are good for the start. Yeah, maybe maybe it could be like bring in a DLC or a free update and bring in a couple other factions or something like that. Um, or like uh, Antonio saying, maybe we instead of adding, trying to add in Britain and France, we could just do some minor nations too. Like we could definitely fit in the Holy Roman and Saxon troops as like minor factions. I th some, think something like that could work. Um, okay, yeah. All right. I'm just reading what you guys are saying. I, th I think what you guys are saying is right. Um well, there, be no, there will be no mobile version. We're just doing full PC. All right, let me show you guys what we have for the dev diary, and then we'll wrap up. Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, the armchair historian, game designer of Master of Command, and director of Armchair History Interactive. If you haven't seen already, we released our first trailer for Master of Command Prussian Glory. Stay tuned for a comprehensive gameplay reveal sometime this summer. For now, let's dive into what Master of Command is all about. Keep in mind that everything you'll see today is just early concepts and sketches, as we're still in early development. Master of Command is a unique single-player game that pairs historical strategy with the roguelike genre. Set in the 18th century, during the Seven Years' War, you start the game by selecting one of three factions, Prussia, Russia, and Austria. And so Just for some historical context here, France technically sent an invasion force to Prussia, so they were involved loosely. But they went in, and I believe it was, is it Rosbach? I, be, I believe, or Rosbach? They went in and immediately got wiped out. And then they pretty much never went back. I, I'm sure they had a small, like, little expeditions, but that was their one major army they sent. So they're technically involved, but you can get away without including them necessarily on the first release of this game, let's say. Um, just west of here, in Hanover around these um, disparate Prussian territories, um, you had the British and the French actually fighting a, a ground war in Central Europe, and the Prussians, just like the French, the Prussians sent one small expeditionary force over. So they were loosely connected, but I just want to provide a little bit of historical context. The Austrians and the Prussians were mainly fighting around the Saxon region and Silesia, and the Russians had invaded East um, Prussia, moved around into Pomerania, and that's where the Swede, uh, Swedes were actually making an incursion before they eventually just left. Prussia... Russia, and Austria, and selecting an army composition you want to start your play through with, each with its own pros and cons. More army compositions can be unlocked through completing challenges. So just to give some context on this, obviously this is just concept art, guys. Don't think this is like my finished UI, right? Um, I was just experimenting with like a layout for all of the um, uh, divisions and regiments and that sort of thing. Um, and I was thinking you could select, like, your... You only have one army in this game. So instead of picking a bunch of copy-and-paste nations, maybe we just have three big countries, but those countries have a bunch of little army compositions you can choose from. So imagine with the Prussians, you unlock the Freikor army composition that you start with, or you unlock the Recon one. Now, during your campaign, you can always buy Freikor troops, but you're never guaranteed to be able to build a full army of them. Because anytime you're approaching villages and towns to recruit and levy troops, it's kind of like Mountain Blade, where you just see what they have to offer for you to levy um so uh yeah this allows you to really stick to like a certain play style and they all have pros and cons position you want to start your playthrough with each with its own pros and cons more army compositions can be unlocked through completing challenges we chose this setting for the game as it's mostly an unexplored theme and puts the player in the shoes of frederick the great who was essentially fighting a war of survival on all fronts, and this really provides a unique and challenging experience that's well suited to the roguelike genre. For those unfamiliar, roguelike games are those that primarily fulfill two requirements, permanent death and random map generation, but we'll get to that in a bit. Once you choose your army, you're sent to a regional map surrounding the Kingdom of Prussia. Every playthrough contains a random shuffle of regions in this general area, meaning everyone's Seven Years' War experience is going to play out differently every time. In one playthrough, fighting may be concentrated in the north around Pomerania, but in another, it's around Silesia and Saxony. So this is like your big regional campaign map. And again, this is just like concept art. We'll, we'll get the UI and stuff on it and everything. 
Um, but right now we're just focusing in Central Europe, and I just thought it'd be cool if you're a general, you choose which campaign, which regions to campaign in. So it's not necessarily like Total War games you've played, where you get this overhead map with um, like cities that you're clicking on and like recruiting from. You just have like as a general, as Frederick, you're like, I need to go campaign in Silesia and contest those Austrians that are um, pushing in. Um, and you're kind of sent there, and then another map is generated for you. And I'm going to talk about that in a sec in this video. You'll see. Every region contains a set difficulty and reward, and these change every time you play. Now let's talk about what happens when you choose a region to campaign in. Once chosen, a completely randomly generated terrain layout is made for your campaign in that area. This unpredictability forces you, like a real commander of the 18th century, to adapt to dynamic conditions, ensuring every playthrough is a test of your strategic abilities. Your mission here is to reach the enemy encampment and face them in a large climactic battle. Which so yeah, when you click on a region, you have a completely, it's 100% randomly generated. So it's kind of cool because a, a real general campaigning in an area he might be unfamiliar with, or he is, um, uh, uh, just an inexperienced commander, like he's never gone and fought a huge war like this. Um, you have got to like look at this with fresh eyes. How many times have you guys played? Let me know in the chat. How many times have you guys played a strategy game where you've replayed? When I go to like play Empire Total, where I play Britain and I go conquer the same areas every time in the same way. I've got like my start. I first I build this amount of line infantry, then I move them here, then I go conquer this, then I go ask for money here, and I kind of follow the same routine every time. So the purpose of this is so there is no routine. You're like a real. You're thrown into the situation. You're like, all right, what the hell do we do? That we're we're surrounded. Maybe this map generated, and we're surrounded by mountains. Where do we even go? And you've got to figure out on the fly, like where you're supposed to, um, where you're supposed to head to. So you're choosing on this kind of like more zoomed in map um, how you're supposed to tackle this enemy force that's occupying the area. And um, uh, before I even hit play and continue, I'll answer a couple questions. Why don't we pause and answer a few questions? Um, are you going to make equipment upgrades? So Glacier, you're actually going to see later in this uh, video. It's really cool. You're going to like it. We, we talk all about, about um, the equipment in the game. So I think that'll be cool. Uh, maybe F French and Britain could be added later as an update for the French and Indian War. Yeah, maybe. That could be cool. Roguelike is great. Congrats on the idea. Thank you, Jarek. Do you guys like the roguelike idea so far? Because I think I don't think that's ever been done before. It's a little risky to try something new like that, but I'm excited because I don't think I've ever played like a historical roguelike that tries to make it different and as a general, you have, you have to imp improvise on the fly. You can't, um, it's not like this routine where you open the same map, the same positions, the same armies, the same locations every time you play. It's, it's a complete random shuffle. So you have really got to be on your feet. There's no, you, you can't be comfortable. You know, it can't be like, oh, I'm doing another Prussia run. I'm going to go buy, build these guys and do this. It's like, I'm doing a Prussia run. Oh crap. This is a whole different layout I'd never seen before. So that's something that, that we're really trying to, um, give the player that kind of experience. Are there turns where you can only move your troops? Okay, so yeah, Rex, on this map here, you'll you'll be doing turns to move to each like location or village. Um, but then when you go into battle, it's fully real time. So that's kind of how we uh, balance that. Um, doing it with a strategy center sounds fun. No, doing the same as Empire and Total War. Yeah, I think it adds more depth in strategy and commanding. Um, Bavaria's contributions. I don't think we're including Bavaria. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go ahead and continue. Um, yep. Which is ultimately how you secure a region, like painting the map in a historical strategy game or beating a boss in a roguelike. But the enemy's camp that you're after grows the longer you spend camp. So notice every time we, we ended a turn, like moving on this map, this enemy camp over here grew by an extra regiment, an extra tent got added. Painting in this region. If you move too fast to reach them, you may face the enemy unprepared, but too slow and they'll grow too strong. So look how I took this really long route, because you can go wherever you want. And now this enemy camp is giant, because I took way too long. They saw me coming, and they're, like, reinforcing that area. And that's that big battle you have to fight to conquer this region. So it all leads up to this huge, defining climactic battle. So you are, you are guaranteed. I'm sure in some uh, strategy games you guys have played, you go in, and you, you think you're going to fight this big war, and the enemy AI, like, didn't position any of their armies correctly, and you just sweep over them. Um, that happens sometimes. In this, you're guaranteed to fight a really clima clima uh, sorry, climactic battle at the end of each region that you're uh, fighting over. To prepare for this fight, you'll be doing things like aiding locals through unique encounters. So here, as you're moving through, you can get like event pop-ups, which is kind of, if you guys have ever played like EU4, we're going to have a bunch of event pop-ups um, as you're moving through the countryside. So you can encounter like locals, or there could be like enemy forces that are just like 
in a village and the, the locals are asking for your help and they might give you a, a reward. Um, so it, there's a little bit of role play involved as you're approaching to, to conquer that region. So that's something I, I really like. Conscripting troops at local villages or towns. and e so, so here, the only way for you to recruit, you don't have this like easy click on one of my cities, recruit a whole batch of my favorite troops. You can't do that. Um, on your campaign, you have to find these towns, these like local Prussian towns or wherever. Um, and they will have a certain amount of troops that are for sale, certain specific regiments that have kind of their own veterancy or their own backgrounds. And then you have to hire them into the army as you go. So you kind of have to levy the men as you move through the countryside even confronting small enemy forces to gain veterancy and loot, all while advancing toward the enemy camp. And the terrain on this map isn't just decoration. You can leverage the terrain to gain advantages, just as strategic masters like Hannibal Barca or Gustavus Adolphus did, by choosing to navigate through challenging terrain, like using mountain passes to obscure your movements. You slow the rate at which the enemy's camp is reinforced. So notice when we went through the mountains, and again, this is all just concept art, guys. This is not like <laughs> the real playable map, right? But this is just a concept I drew. So it's, it's my artist skills. Uh, I didn't draw the background map, but like these little mountains I drew, you know what I mean? So it's just a, a basic concept here. Um, but notice when we moved through the mountains, the enemy camp didn't grow at all. So you were like risking, it's kind of like Hannibal moving through the Alps and then jumping into Rome. And they're like, where the hell did he come from? So that's something that you can do naturally. Like that's fully emergent gameplay. That's not scripted to happen like that. Um, you can just do that on the campaign whenever you want. And, and all the terrain does different things that you're interacting with. So it, it's, it's so important to plan like the exact trail that your army is going to take. As they've lost track of your army, this strategy, while effective, comes with its own set of challenges, including the increased consumption of your supplies and high attrition rates on your troops. Visiting nearby villages for winter coats and extra provisions might be the prudent course of action to prepare for such a demanding campaign. So logistics are fully part of this. You can go to towns and villages and buy food for those. And if you move through more difficult terrain, it's going to consume more provisions. Um, and there are items in this game. So it is not like raising a regiment and he's just a number of faceless robot you're going to throw into battle. That regiment has like its own distinct play style. It's got its own kind of personality to it. And those regiments can be equipped with literal pieces of equipment. You can give them like reinforced ramrods or like steel ramrods. You can give them winter coats so they don't take as much attrition on the campaign map. Any sorts of those things. So if you knew you wanted to go through mountains a lot and like and try to hide your armies and you found a whole um, a store with a ton of winter clothing, you could buy all that, equip it to your army, and now you've got a whole new play style sort of unlocked. But if you go through a playthrough and you're never finding that winter clothes, maybe you want to completely avoid uh, like the winter mountains and, and, and that sort of thing. Once you find yourself thrust into combat, whether it's the enemy camp or a group of enemies along the way, you'll be sent into a pitched battle. Our battle system operates fully in real time, requiring you to vigilantly monitor your troops' morale, ammunition, and effectiveness. Officers are an important part of battle. You can see here how each of your divisions has a commanding officer. Despite our game's stylized graphics, we are aiming for battles to be realistic and impactful with long-range engagements. Assuming you've won your battle and live to fight another day, it's time to check out your army's camp. This screen is where you can manage all the regiments and officers under your command. You'll be able to equip your regiments with all sorts of individual items, including muskets, bayonets, and even small items like cartridge boxes or grenades. So yeah, you can pick you, you can pick like you, you can um grab specific items and you can even loot these from enemy armies that you beat and like fully personalize these regiments this this will be a sense of attachment you've never had before in any kind of like historical game to your individual regiments um under your command you'll see i'll talk about it further in this video too you can personalize your army by changing the pattern or color of regimental flags which in turn changes the uniform color those men go into battle with so the facing colors are completely tied to the regimental flags, which you can customize. And you can color code your regiments. You can pick colors that you like. You can pick colors that are um, more practical to you. Um, you could make all the guys wearing pink your guys who fight in melee, or all the guys in, the bl in black are your elite troops. You can do any kind of color scheming you want or just do it for fun. So um, that is something that you're not only going to see on the unit cards, like the busts here, but you'll also see that literally in battle. The regiments will actually go into battle. The models, I was telling you guys before, the models of those troops are fully modular, so they will be recolored however you chose them, and they're going to carry that flag that you designed for them too. It's important to feel a sense of attachment to these troops, who you'll be taking with you for the whole duration of your campaign. 
Instead of discarding weaker units over time and replacing them with better ones, you'll be able to directly upgrade and reform your existing regiments, like upgrading Bare Bones recruits all the way up to a Grenadier Regiment. This preserves your regiment's history and the items you've given them. Throughout and so there, this is like Mountain Blade. It's like if, if you get your like bare bones recruits and you stick with them the whole game, you can recruit them or like, um, sorry, upgrade them up to your best guys and customize them too. Um, so there is no such dude, like this game is <laughs> this game is like you've got your one army. Um, there is no such thing as like, uh, oh, I'll throw in a stack, they'll get destroyed, I'll raise another stack. That's not your thing. This is like, these are my men. I care about my men. I'm going to I'm going to customize them, give them items I like, upgrade them into new units, reform them, assign them to an officer that fits them best. Um it's so important to keep these guys alive. Oliver says imagine losing the last battle. Yeah, dude, it's going to be so much tension. If you lose that battle and you lose everything, that's going to be devastating. But I want you to feel like Frederick was leading his one force and he's putting out fires all across uh Prussia. So, um to me, that's so important. Also, the one little detail you may have noticed that I didn't talk about in the dev diary, look at these little things next to the flag, these three symbols. Those are going to be like personality traits that your regiment develops. So if your regiment was in battle and like like kicking ass in melee charges, he might get a personality trait called like fierce, and now he's way better fighting in melee. Um, or if he, if he was put in time after time and he got his ass kicked uh you might get a regiment called like or a, sorry a, a trait called um like fatigued and these guys are just naturally less willing or like cowardly maybe they don't want to go into battle anymore so there is like a, an element of um humanity in these regiments they're not like little faceless robots that you can just raise and throw into in, into the fight um i was listening to a big audio book about frederick the great and there were times where um regiments first of all regiments were actually ranked Frederick would rank his regiments on like a scale of priority and then regiments would know where they stood <laughs> in his army um, and they would even be given like nicknames at times and sometimes if they really didn't like what they were called or known for they would try to prove themselves in battle to like gain Frederick's respect or their general's respect um, so I think there was a famous cavalry regiment that was known as being the one of the worst and they hated the reputation so bad that they um, would try these daring charges so much that eventually they became reformed and known as one of the best so they actually started off as one of the worst and became one of the best in the army. And I like those kind of stories and those role-playing elements um, that you typically do not see in historical strategy games. So that's something that we're uh, going for. Is your army by changing the pattern or color of regimental flags, which in turn changes the uniform color of those men part, going yeah. up to a grenadier regiment. This and uh, uh, Dagu Khan, I guess Battle Brothers is a great inspiration. Battle Brothers is one of my favorite games. If you guys have noticed, like Battle Brothers, Faster Than Light, those kind of games, um, I weaved a lot of those systems in when I was designing uh, that. This preserves your regiment's history and the items you've given them. Throughout your campaign, you will gain experience and improve your army through attributes, which you can add to your general. And as you grow, so do your officers with new traits and abilities. These officers hail from different cultures and backgrounds, each bringing different bonuses and penalties that you can play around to improve the ability of your regiments. There's a bit of risk and reward at play because you must assign an officer to be attached to a regiment in each division. So the closer you have that unit to the front line, the bigger buffs you'll notice, but you're also risking that officer's life in combat. For those- uh, Nicolo is asking, um, can you do defensive battles where the enemy has to come to your camp? Right now, we have it so you just consistently have to go out for their camp. But I am thinking it could be cool that the final region that you fight over is the enemy coming for you that time. Now, I'm not sure. I can't really confirm that yet because I just want to keep the gameplay simple. I want to keep it to be expected. If we're like changing up where the enemy's going, how the camp works, they're splitting off multiple armies, they're, they're moving around, they're chasing you, you're chasing them. It could just be a lot. You, you know, you kind of open yourself up for more bugs and more balancing issues. So we're trying to just keep a simple, um, straightforward gameplay loop. Uh, but it's a cool idea, uh, Nicolo, and I'll, I'll let you guys know if we ever change that system or innovate on it or update on it. Um, I'm sure we can play around with it. For the, for the time being, though, we currently just have planned that you've got to go battle that main camp. Now, the one thing I will say is it's not as if the enemy camp in the region is their army, and that's it. Um, all spread throughout that region are um, smaller enemy armies that you will be encountering. Uh, and in more difficult regions, there might be a lot of them. So you're going to be battling through uh, so certain armies that are very aggressive toward you as you're trying to reach that camp. So there is a um, balance between offensive battles and defensive battles because um, you might be crossing a river on that 
kind of uh, campaign map, and then you might immediately encounter an enemy force that is charging straight toward you, and now you load into a battle map that has a river behind you, and you're like, oh crap, we have to hold the line and not die here. Um, so that is kind of like how we make that gameplay a little more dynamic. Um, I'll read a couple of other comments too. Um, are there like sneak mechanics? We I think we will have it so troops can be concealed with like fog of war. Yeah. So this is like fire maneuver, but on a smaller scale. Yeah, I think it's a little more focused and more polished with more some more fluid combat with um, more in-depth campaign systems with a bigger emphasis on the game design and gameplay loop. I love how you took the region campaign element from Warhammer mechanics, brings a uh, constant sense of loss to it. I've actually never played Warhammer uh, games. I'm actually not familiar with that. The main inspiration I took from the regional campaign were like your classic uh, roguelike games. So games like Faster Than Light or Slay the Spire, things like that. Um, that's not to say our game's going to be like those games necessarily. So if you don't like those games, I'm, there are still things that you're going to like in this. Um, but that, I'm just speaking as a game designer where I took some um, inspiration from. Uh, let me read some more stuff here. Uh, instead of random generation, you have fixed terrain encounters in random places. I like the random generation, but I will do um, encounters that are pre-written. So it's a balance between, like, you'll find some things that are consistent, but you're also, every campaign map you play on is going to have a completely different seed. And I like that randomness, that as a general, I don't want you, the one thing I don't want you to do is you play the game for 10 hours, and now you've seen every single campaign layout, and you expect, you have the same thing you're going to do every time. I really don't want a player to um, do that. Um, this looks dope. Thank you. Uh, do you have any idea about price and state of development? So development, I would say we're going to be done by the very end of this year or the start of next year. And price is anywhere from 20 to $30. I don't want to price it yet until it's done. And I see like how much depth we actually fit in, in the game and how long players are playing for. Cause if you can get a hundred hours out of this game, I have no problem pricing it at like $30. But if this is more of like, you know, you're playing it just a couple times. Now we are enforcing a lot of, or we're like incorporating a lot of um, replayability. So I don't imagine this is a game that you play just a handful of times. Um, but if players are really getting into it and dumping a lot of hours into it, then I have no problem going going with like the thirty dollars price. But if you know it's we're still um, a new game studio, and um, if you're not getting hundreds of hours out of it or something ridiculous, I could see us pricing it at like a, a standard like twenty dollars or something like that. So it's kind of uh, up in the air currently. Um, making it to Waterloo with this one—that's funny. Um, uh, I really, Tyler, I really want it so the battlefield becomes super smoky as you're fighting. We haven't done that yet. You'll notice there's like no smoke on the battlefield. That is something that I'm considering for sure. I, I care a lot about making it feel immersive like that. And it just looks cool. So, yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to continue on. Those familiar with the time period, you'll know that many officers were killed in battle during this war especially. So once you've won your first set of battles and secured your first region, how do you win a game of Master of Command? Well, once you've taken enough regions, which get increasingly difficult over time, a final assault is launched around your capital, and this will be the hardest battle for you to fight. Our difficulty curve looks something like this, which starts the game off easier and becomes harder as you learn the ropes. Sometimes, historical strategy games can have an inverse of this difficulty curve, which is why some of you may have found yourselves quitting certain empire-building games because you get so powerful by the end that the AI simply can't keep up. How many, how many times do you guys experience this? Because every time I play a strategy game, I feel like this is the difficulty curve I get, where it's like the start is the most exciting part, everything is really hard, and the moment you get the ball rolling and you start building up all your regions and upgrading everything, it becomes so easy. I, I don't think I've ever finished so so many strategy games. I usually just quit. So something that we're really working hard on is we want it to feel like this. We want it to feel like, all right, it's a little easy. It's my first region. I've just got a couple it troops. It becomes harder. And like, uh-oh, okay, these regions are actually getting really difficult. Let me pay more attention. Let me get my logistics figured out. And then, okay, crap, the biggest army I've ever fought is coming for me. This is my final test. Look, my army's fully upgraded. I decked them out. I gave them the best things I can. Can I beat them and win this war? And that's how I want you to feel by the end of the game. You shouldn't be quitting halfway through. You should be, like, hoping that the game doesn't quit you out halfway through, that you don't lose a battle and, and lose everything. I want you to really feel so attached um, all the way to the very end. It's a difficult thing for a player to feel like that, but that's what we're really trying to go for. Um, yeah. And uh, Dakugan makes a really good point, too. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing your name, and I'm sorry about that. Getting rid of snowballing is important, but progress should matter as well. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely... How many times have you guys played other games? Usually not in historical strategy, but just other games where it feels like the better you're progressing, the more the game's punishing you. Like, I, I played Baldur's Gate, and I felt like I was trying to do everything right, but the game was getting so hard for me that I actually couldn't finish it at one point. I was just stuck. And I was really trying to pay attention to the game. I play strategy games all the time. Uh, but that game was, like, punishing me or, like, just just getting so tough and I couldn't keep up. 
Um, so I think that's a really important balance. And that's why we're including all those little upgrades, attributes, um, personal touches you can do to your regiment. So you really feel like you can start stacking progress and becoming overpowered. But that enemy force is still going to prove a challenge to you. So you've got that really fine um, thing where your army feels a little bit overpowered in some battles, but um, that final battle is coming up. And that's where you've got to use everything you possibly can to try to win that. So that's that balance I'm trying to uh, make sure that we've got. Mountain Blade has that problem. You get a couple pieces of land, especially in story mode. You have, have to juggle so much nonsense you can't enjoy the game. Yeah. You have found yourselves quitting certain our core gameplay loop. And despite the smaller region we're covering, we really think you'll find our game to be a unique experience every time you play. For now, that's all I got to show off. I hope this gives you a clear picture for our plan for Master of Command, Prussian Glory. We're definitely going to make more development diaries that go into further depth on the individual systems showcased today. Let us know down below what you want to learn more about next and any suggestions or critiques you might have. The best way to support us is by wishlisting on Steam and becoming a member of our Patreon. Mid tier or higher support on Patreon will get you access to the game a full week before it releases. Thanks for your support, and I'll see you next time. Cool. All right, so that's our first devlog. Um, again, if you're new here, I would definitely recommend checking out the Steam page and leaving us a wish list or going into the little community hub and leaving a discussion or note here. You can also, um, oh, it's not working. Okay, I don't know why. You guys hear me, right? I didn't disconnect. Okay, now it's working. Um, and I'll also leave you guys the Discord link. I will be here after the stream to answer questions, so please jump on and ask me anything you want to. Um, and then I'll answer some a couple last questions. I'm going to head out, okay? Um, and I'm going to do a survey up on that Discord, too. What scale will the battles be? I'm thinking the player at most will have 20 regiments. And those regiment sizes will be like 1,200 men. So that's like technically you could have up to like 24,000 guys um, on your on your side um, or more. We'll see. It, this isn't a literal number. I'm not, I'm not sure just yet, but that's roughly what I'm looking at. Um, so, yeah, I want bigger battles. But if they're too big, that sense of attachment is going to be lost because you're going to have hordes of men. So it's really trying to find the balance between like having an epic scale, but also not overwhelming the player with too much. Um, are you going to do remastered Seven Years War? I'm thinking on Armchair History TV of doing an entire series on Frederick the Great and releasing maybe like the first episode completely for free for you guys. So even if you're not a paid member, you can still watch like that first episode. Um, and I think that would be really fun to do. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Fire Maneuver does not get new stuff. Striker, I said um, in the beginning of the stream, I explained what happened with Fire Maneuver. If you want, you could rewind and kind of start from the beginning. And, and I do talk a bit about Fire Maneuver. Is it similar to Ultimate General? Gettysburg, have you played that? Yeah, I've, I've played all the Ultimate General games and Total War games. We've got definitely some similarities to Ultimate General. And I'm, I'm a big fan of those games. There's a couple things I don't like, but I, ultimately th those were um, fun games for me. I enjoyed them. Um, somebody was asking if you play as another country, what happens at the end? I will still make it so you so like Prussia launches a big attack. Let's, let's say I'm Russia. Prussia would launch a big attack on East Prussia. Or if I'm Austria... Prussia launches a big attack on Bohemia or something like that. So you'll still get that kind of like big end game system, regardless of who you're playing as. We also have a history mode, which you can toggle on or off. So if you turn off historical accuracy, then if you're playing as Austria, you might be fighting the Russians and the Prussians. Or if you turn off historical accuracy as Russia, you'll fight the Prussians and Austrians and so on. Uh, could you please put the Discord link in the comments? Um, I put it in the description, but I will put it into the comments here again. And you should be able to click on this so you can join up the Discord. All right, guys. I'm going to head out. I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, what, what's your overall opinion from... What are you guys most excited for? And what's something that you're the least excited for from what I've shown? Like, give me a pro and a con. Something that I can take away. Um, maybe even something that we can consider on our end. Um, or maybe it's something that is fundamentally different from what you like in games. And it's not something that we're going to be, be able to change. But just a concern that you might have. Um, so a pro and a con before I head out, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and I'll, I'll send over some screenshots to our developers um, of what you guys think ultimately. Um, so this is your one, one shot. I'm going to screenshot everything you guys say if you want to um, write something to us. Um, Joe, the game will probably come out at the very end of this year or the start of next year. That's what I'm thinking. But yeah, if you guys have any um, thoughts on something that you like and don't like, um, let me know. And I can kind of forward that and, and have a discussion with our dev team regarding it. Um, all right, let's take a screenshot there. And I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to write your screenshot and then I'll head out. So when Doggo goes all the way to the top, that's when I'll take the next screenshot here. But yeah, think of something. I'll give you guys a minute. You don't have to rush to type. Uh, no confirmed date just yet, Miggy. I'm thinking maybe the end of the year if, if we're making really good progress, but I can't um, promise that. Uh, 
Um, please do multiplayer. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. I don't think we're going to be able to do multiplayer. A lot of people are asking for it. A surprising, surprisingly few people actually play multiplayer in these games. Like, we did multiplayer for Fire Maneuver, and people still play it that way, but, um, like, 70% of the battles fought in Fire Maneuver were single player, and we didn't build a very good single player system, so... Um, people, I think, mostly prioritize that. All right, guys, I'm going to head out. I took some screenshots of what you said. And uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for the stream. Um, and uh, check out this video. Subscribe to it. Leave a like. Leave a comment here. And I will see you later. Thank you.